are you passionate about night photography or astrophotography, and do you also use an APS-C sensor? What I'm going to show you in this video might interest you. The new Sigma 17-40F 1.8 DC Art is a unique lens, successor to the old Sigma 18-35F 1.8 for DSLR cameras. This new lens picks up the baton in the mirrorless camera field as the brightest zoom on the market for crop sensors. My name is Luis Miguel Azorín, and I welcome you once again to Natural Portrait. This week, we're going to put this new Sigma release to the test under the stars. Before we begin, let me tell you that in this video you won't find a general photographic review of this lens. However, you will find one of the best optical quality analyses that can be done on a lens because night photography and stars are able to reveal optical flaws that are completely invisible in any other situation. So I encourage you to stay and watch. As a user and advocate of the APS-C sensor, I have to say it's great to see that some brands still care about cropped sensors. And this release may have a lot to do with the recent opening of the Canon RF mount, at least in its APS-C version, to lenses from other brands. And the thing is, this Sigma 17-40F 1.8 is available for Sony mounts, like this unit I have here for Fuji mount, for L mount, and for Canon RF mount. In terms of focal length, it covers a range from 17mm to 40mm, which, taking the crop factor into account, gives us a full-frame equivalent focal length of about 26 mm to about 60 mm. In other words, it goes from a wide angle to a standard focal length with a constant f, 1.8 aperture, which is great both for daytime photography to achieve a beautiful background blur or bokeh, and for nighttime photography and astrophotography to capture as much light as possible in the shortest amount of time. This is a lens that weighs 535 grams. It's big, as you can see. It's not a particularly small lens, despite being designed for mirrorless cameras, and moreover with an APS-C crop sensor. But with an F, 1.8 aperture, it can become a unique all-purpose lens to cover a multitude of situations, especially in travel photography. Additionally, this is a weather seal lens, so once again, it can be a great ally for travel. Aesthetically, it's clear that this is a lens from Sigma's art series, their top-of-the-line range. The aperture is automatic and can be controlled from the camera body in A mode, but we can also adjust it manually using the typical aperture ring found on art lenses. We have the classic switch to enable or disable the aperture ring click and a button to lock the aperture ring. There's a button to enable or disable autofocus and we have two customizable buttons. And finally, a 67mm filter thread. As for the price, the official retail price is 999 euros. Expensive? Cheap? This is something very subjective. If you're not the kind of photographer who does a lot of night photography or astrophotography, you can find other good lenses with an F, 2.8 aperture for a little more than half this price. You can also find very good Prime F 1.4 lenses, even slightly brighter than this one, at a fraction of this price, but they won't give you the versatility of this zoom. So I think this price is quite reasonable, considering the versatility this lens offers, especially in low-light conditions. And now that we've analyzed the features of this Sigma 17-40F 1.8, Let's head out into the field and see how it performs in a real-world situation. Well, here we are at the location we've chosen to test this Sigma 17 to 40F 1.8 DC art. In front of us, we have a reservoir and a walkway, and in the distance, though, you probably can't quite see it, we have the Milky Way, with the entire center of the Milky Way already positioned above the walkway. In this session, we're going to run several tests. The first one will be to see how this new Sigma lens performs by shooting directly from a tripod at that F, 1.8 aperture. As we've already mentioned, this is a lens for APS-C sensors, so the camera I'm using is a Sony S6400. All right, let's get started with the first test. I'm gonna frame the shot. There in the background, we have the core of the Milky Way. Let's include a bit of this walkway right in front of us, and then the bridge that crosses from one side of the reservoir to the other. 
I have to say that it doesn't feel the same as working with an ultra wide angle lens. Still, we're working with a wide angle lens. Those 17 millimeters give us, if I remember correctly, about 26 or 27 millimeters of equivalent focal length on full frame. And when photographing objects like the Milky Way with a foreground like the one we have here, everything seems to look a bit more compressed. But anyway, in the end, we have everything from a wide angle to a medium focal length with a very wide F, 1.8 aperture, which will allow us to cover a lot of different situations. I'm going to adjust the focus as always manually for night photography and astrophotography. And let's take the shot. All right, so there's our first capture and let's take a look at it. The first part of the walkway is slightly out of focus because it's very close to us and well, that's simply a matter of depth of field. But let's go straight to what we're interested in. Let's check the stars. Let's start with the center of the image. And um, well, despite the light pollution we have, which is quite high, at first glance, I see the stars very clearly. They're very, very small. Let's check the corners. All right. Here in the corners, we can see that the stars are still very, very small, but we do have some coma effect. We have that distortion that occurs in the stars, making them look somewhat like a comet. Uh, it's perfectly visible, but only when you zoom in a lot on the image. Let's go to the other corner, the upper right corner, and here the effect is much more noticeable. If we look at the overall appearance of the entire photo, we can see that on the left side, especially towards the upper left corner, the stars generally appear smaller, while on the right side they look thicker. And that's precisely because of this coma effect, which makes those stars appear much thicker. From my point of view, this is a perfectly usable image at maximum aperture, but since this is Sigma's art series, I have to say I was expecting that extreme sharpness I've seen in other art lenses. Here, well, we do have that coma effect in both corners, and it's especially pronounced in the upper right corner. Let's stop down the aperture a bit to see what effect we get if we close it by one stop. Of course, by stopping down one stop, we're already at f, 2.8, which is what you'd find in any other lens on the market. Even so, let's take the shot and see the difference we get in the stars. Let's turn off the light and take the photo. Here we have the photo already. Let's take a look at it. Here we have the center of the photograph, Let's first check the upper left corner, where I have to say that by stopping down one stop, I can see the stars very well. Now I can really appreciate them as perfectly sharp points, perfectly corrected. Let's check the upper right corner, and I have to say that now it's much better. The stars are much better corrected, but they're still not perfect in the upper right corner. All right, now we've moved to another spot. We're now positioned right in front of the walkway that crosses the reservoir. Over on that side, we already have the center of the Milky Way, which is moving toward the upper left part of my frame, and the frame I have captures the walkway perfectly centered. But anyway, what's important here is to see how this lens performs in these nighttime photography situations. Exposure time, 10 seconds, maximum aperture at f1.8, ISO 3200. We turn off the light and take the shot. All right, there it is. Let's take a look at it. Well, I have to say that the image is perfect when it comes to the foreground. Here we have a foreground with a lot of detail in the walkway. Despite the noise in the photo, there is some noise. Let's check the stars, which is what matters most to us. Perfect stars in the center, upper left corner, we have those stars with a coma effect. And in the upper right corner, well, I have to say that in this case, I don't know if it was just a coincidence in the previous case with the stars that ended up in the frame, maybe they were just too bright. But now I have to say that I noticed a coma similar to what we have on the other side in the upper left part. So at first I thought maybe the lens was the center, but now I don't get that impression. I see that the coma we have on both sides is completely equivalent. Let's do the same example again with the same framing, stopping down one stop to f2.8, and let's take the same photo. All right, here we have it, and let's take a look. Once again, perfect stars in the center, upper left corner. Now I can't quite see the stars as completely perfect. From my point of view, they look pretty good, really, really good, but they're not absolutely perfect. And on the right side, it's the same I see, exactly the same pattern. Stars that are almost, almost perfect. So for me, the lens at f 2.8 performs absolutely amazingly, and at f 1.8, the lens behaves quite well, not giving us absolutely perfect stars, but very, very good ones, considering we're working with a zoom. Well, we've now reviewed how this lens performs with the camera mounted on a tripod and shooting wide angle. I'm gonna set up the tracker and take it all the way to 40 millimeters to see how this Sigma 17 to 40 millimeters F 1.8 performs. All right, 
The tracker is now set up, the camera is mounted on it, and the first thing we're going to do is go straight to 40 millimeters of focal length, the maximum focal length of this lens. I'm going to check the focus, even though in principle the lens should be par focal, but it's always a good idea if we change the focal length with any lens though, take another look at the focus, especially in astrophotography. I'm going to readjust the settings. We'll shoot for 20 seconds at maximum aperture f, 1.8, and I'll set the isolates lower it to ISO 800, for example. All right, I've meticulously got the framing perfectly set up and confirmed the S. That's absolutely correct and precisely how I want it to be. Now with everything aligned and ready, let's go ahead and confidently take this shot. There we have it, that very first photo captured successfully at the focal length of exactly 40 millimeters. Okay, let's take a look at it. Let's start with the center of the photo. We're at maximum aperture f 1.8, and as you can see, the stars are absolutely excellent. They're very, very small stars, very pinpoint. The left side is also very, very good. Let's go to the lower left corner, which we haven't checked yet, and we see pretty much the same thing we've seen in the other test, and I have to say it seems like a very, very good performance. The brightest stars seem like they want to show a bit of coma, which really isn't the case. They actually have a slight distortion, but they're quite decent. Let's go to the upper left corner, same thing. The brightest stars seem like they want to show a bit of coma, which is really just a very slight distortion in the stars. Upper right corner, same thing, and lower right corner the same. Honestly, the lens performs incredibly well at 40 mm focal length, even at maximum aperture. It's a fabulous image. Even so, let's stop down the aperture one stop to f2.8. Let's compensate by increasing the ISO by one stop to ISO 1600 and we'll take another photo to check the performance at 40 millimeters, stopping down one stop to f2.8. There we have it. Let's zoom in. And uh, well, if before the stars were very, very good, excellent, now they're top of the class in the central area. Let's check the corners. Incredible. The performance of this 40mm lens is incredible. 